I want to start by just a quick introduction, and then we're going to uh -huh. get right to some questions because we Great. have the, a short lightning talk. So I want to use our time. Let's go. And I want you to hear from the mayor directly. So data is in the first sentence of Mayor Bynum's official bio on the Tulsa website. Quote, sworn in as the 40th mayor of Tulsa in 2016, Mayor G.T. Bynum is using data and innovation to bring people together to make a difference to make a difference in our city and our city more globally competitive. So data is in your bio. That's pretty That's great. <laughs> During your time in this program, Mayor Bynum and his team have created an ambitious citywide data strategy to overhaul the city's approach to using data. The mayor's data strategy is showing dividends in helping the city support people experiencing homelessness, which is what we were just talking about, and better aligning its services to meet the residents' needs. So let's start with a few questions, Mayor Bynum. First, about a year ago, you began your journey in the City Data Alliance program, and you created your vision for Tulsa to use data to support your priorities and improve outcomes for your residents. Can you share your vision with us? Sure. Um, I think it's important for you to understand where I come from as a mayor. Like my One of my favorite segments of the program last year was the one you all did earlier where you talk about how you got into public service and everything, and as it was reminiscent for me to hear several of you talk about this being a job where you bring people together. Like I, I really view cities as, at least in the United States, we're kind of the last place where citizens expect us to work together to solve problems. The federal government gets a total pass on this anymore. People can have partisan fights all day. But at the city level, you have to fix problems for people. And when I first got involved in uh, the, the data effort, was a program that Beth was running when I was on our city council, and I got into it more than anything as an old budget staffer from Capitol Hill in DC. I thought, oh, I'm gonna get in and use data to figure out how to cut out waste, fraud, and abuse. Um, and what I quickly learned in that program, and, and if you remember nothing else that I say today, please remember this. The value of data to us as mayors is that it allows us to pull issues out of philosophical divides and bring them down into practical problem solving. That allows people who are gonna vote for all sorts of different presidential candidates next year to work together to solve problems. And so when we we're putting our data strategy together, the key for me is that we are bringing data together, convening it, and providing it to stakeholders and decision makers so they can make informed decisions and that we are empowering people of diverse opinions to come together and work together to solve problems. That's great. Um, how did you define success for your citywide data strategy? Well, I think the key for me uh, as a mayor is that success has to be rooted in the outcomes. Um, I did not want us to go through, you know, patting ourselves on the back for collecting a bunch of data that nobody was using to improve people's lives in Tulsa. So it has to be actionable. And I'll point to two good examples. One is stemming out of the case study that you literally just covered. Um, we covered that one in last year's convening as well. I went home uh, from this meeting 10 months ago and went back to our team. I made everybody read the case study in my office. And then we started convening community-wide stakeholder groups, acknowledging that there is a challenge around homelessness in Tulsa, but that we as the city aren't necessarily the experts. We are not expected to come in and come up with a magical solution that's going to fix something that lots of other groups are working on. What we can do is bring convening power and potentially funding to help address the problem. Uh, we brought stakeholders from the nonprofit community, from governmental agencies, from the faith-based community, and looked at this issue. And what was really interesting was every group that we've talked with, you know, they'll say, well, the, the keys that we need are you know, A, B, C, and we need more housing. And then the next group would say, well, X, Y, Z, and we need more housing. Didn't take a rocket scientist to pick up on a theme here. And so we then commissioned an independent study to look at, well, how much housing do we really need in Tulsa? And breaking it out amongst different kinds of housing. I mean, you've got everything from mansions, uh, to workforce housing, permanent supportive housing, shelter space. And what they told us was Tulsa's short in everything, but that 
out of all of the housing that you need, the private sector is going to take care of about 80% of that. But 20% of that, the government has to play a more active role, and the federal funding that you're getting is not enough to solve the problem. And so we did two things out of that. One, I used my State of the City address to talk about the bully pulpit. I used that to challenge our private sector to invest $500 million in new housing in Tulsa over the next two years. And then we just announced recently we're going to have a vote in August for the citizens to fund $100 million into housing initiatives in Tulsa into the stuff that the private sector isn't going to solve. That's shelter space, permanent supportive housing, transitional housing. Uh, and we're big believers that this isn't like, I appreciated the comment that was made earlier, the easy part is building stuff. But you do have to build the stuff to get people off the street before they can stabilize and get the help that they need. That seems to be a recurring theme from all of the community groups that we've talked with. A key thing in this uh, is not just the collection and analysis of data for us, though. It's also been making sure that these stakeholders know that we as a city are there to support their efforts. Uh, we want to use our data apparatus, our bully pulpit, our funding capacity to support the work they're doing, not to get in their way or to try and overrun them. Uh, another one that's probably more key to like day-to-day -day city functions, uh, we partnered with Gallup and did an in-depth opinion analysis of the city, of all the citizens. And one of the things we found was that there are specific neighborhoods in Tulsa where people didn't feel safe. But when we did a deeper dive with them, we found it wasn't because of crime. It was because of loose and stray dogs in their neighborhood. So then I asked our animal control team, all right, well, can you show me like where, you know, where are the peak calls that we're getting? What does that look like? And they came back and gave me a sheet and it said, showed me, you know, Monday through Friday, really peaked in the afternoon. I was like, okay, well, what about like the nights and the weekends? There's literally nothing on here. And they're like, well, because animal control is closed at night and on the weekends, so we don't collect any data. Well, who responds to a vicious dog call during that time? Well, the police department is collecting that data. So I had to go to the police department and collect their data, and our data team brought all that together. And what we found was the peak calls for service were at nights and on the weekends when the animal control folks were at home. So we have changed around our shifts. So animal control employees now, they get a couple days off during the weekdays and they're working in the evenings and on the weekends when those peak calls for service are. Because of that, we've significantly reduced the loose and stray animal population in Tulsa and we're improving citizen sense of safety in our community. Those are great examples, great. Thank you for sharing. Um, one of the biggest challenges we see in the work that we're doing and all this data work are the, we have lone wolves all over, you know, we have great lone wolves in cities, you know, city halls across the country, across the globe. Um, but, you know, creating long lasting cultural change to build your data workforce mm -hmm. and to make data the daily practice in your city is, is very challenging. So in your view, you know, what are you doing to create that long lasting cultural change to be more data informed and data driven? Um, I was very fortunate in the program I went through that Beth led that they really emphasize what you just heard Yorit emphasizing so much as well, which is the mayor has to be there. Uh, the people in your team, especially in the team at the city, are not going to buy into it if it's not clearly a mayoral priority. And just putting it on the website or in a document is not enough. A mayor demonstrates your commitment to something by your physical presence in the meetings where that's being addressed. And so... From the very start of my administration, I made a point. Uh, we started convening. Uh, we ripped off the term that Maryland and Baltimore and Louisville use. We call it Tolstat uh, in Tulsa. But we convene groups. We started out focusing on things like animal control or police recruiting uh, and now with homelessness. Uh, but we bring people from different departments together uh, and sometimes outside agencies to utilize data, we meet every other week, depending on the subject, uh, and I'm at every one of those meetings. So they know that this is a key priority for me. I would say the other big one that I was not expecting, but was so important, when I first came in as mayor and we started talking about using data, our workforce at the city was terrified of it. And what we realized was my predecessor had brought 
a consulting firm in uh, to use data to figure out whose jobs were going to get eliminated. And so for the workforce at the city, when a mayor would talk about using data, that meant the danger of their jobs getting eliminated. And it took months, probably about almost a year, for my team and I to convince the team at the city, and especially department leadership and on down, that our approach to data is not about eliminating jobs. It's about helping you take on the biggest challenges that your department and your team faces, and we want to bring these tools to help you solve them. And once we got a few early wins on that, it totally changed everything. Uh, and now we have people in departments who are fighting with each other over who gets to be in those Tolstat meetings uh, and participate in that problem solving. That's great progress. That's great progress. One last question, and then folks, I'll, I'll, I'll offer an opportunity for any of you to ask any questions, any of our mayors. Um, so how did you engage and get support from your stakeholders on your data governance across your city? It's an important step. Yes, well, first, uh, we established, when I came in as mayor, we established the Office of Performance Strategy and Innovation. And the idea there was we wanted one team based in the mayor's office that focused on data and innovation. Uh, second thing that came out of that was that the, the guy that started out leading that team became the CFO for the city. So that was another indicator to city staff of how important this was uh, to the work that we were doing as a city. And that, by the way, that office, we call it the Office of Performance Strategy and Innovation, that's been, in the time I've been mayor, one to three people. I mean, you don't need hundreds of people to make a huge impact with this work, thankfully, if you're leveraging the team you already have and have buy-in with them. With our data governance strategy that we've been working on as a result of the City Data Alliance, I will say first, timing was key for us. Uh, by complete fluke of good fortune, I went through this program immediately after we got hit with a malware attack that destroyed everything that we had spent our, my first term establishing from a data infrastructure. And on the one hand, that was like very challenging because you spend all this time building this infrastructure and then it's gone. But the positive, as mayors should always look at the positive, the positive of it was that we weren't beholden to old systems. We're able to start from scratch based on best practices in 2022, 2023, rather than maybe what some system that the city had paid for years ago. Um, the other key thing for us in this program and with governance is that it has to be, as I mentioned at the beginning and kind of tying back into our core values when it comes to data, it has to be actionable by departmental leadership across the board. So like the homelessness initiatives that I was talking about a moment ago, Every single day, we have at least six city departments that are engaging with Tulsans who are experiencing homelessness. Each of them has data and experience that can, they can bring to that table and share with us. And then, as a mayor, it allows me to go out to the citizens and vouch for the largest investment in housing in the history of Tulsa, which is a direct result of me being in this room like you are right now and reading that case study. Um, a mayor can follow through on those recommendations, but you have to have the team in place and the buy-in, and all of that builds up to, can build up to, I think, transformative policy change. 